Hi guys, today I'm going to talk about how I got my job with BAE Systems on their project management apprenticeship. So, as it's National Apprenticeship Week, I thought I would talk about my apprenticeship. And where else to start but right at the beginning. So a little bit of background about me. I left school when I was 18, well 19 because I retook my A-levels. Um, I then went straight into work and I worked in sort of events, uh, administration, loads of sort of bits and bobs all over the place. So when I was 23 I um, got a new boyfriend and wanted to move in with him and out from my parents house. So I started looking for jobs and one day he sent me an email saying why don't you apply for this apprenticeship? I thought what the heck let's give it a go. So at that point I was two thirds of the way through my degree with the Open University and um, but needed the money so I went along and applied. Now this was five years ago now so some of the details may not be completely correct and I also know that BA Systems has changed the way it does its recruitment now but it will give you a flavour of what it's like to go and apply for an apprenticeship. Part one was the application. So this was just an online application form like any other, um, a couple of sort of 250 words on how you're good at this thing. At that point they used competency but competency. At that point they used competency based um, interview questions so it was tell us a situation where you've had to deal with a conflict, tell us a situation where you've had to do this. I know now the fashion has moved more towards, I can't remember what it's called, but basically it's more to do with you given a situation and you've got to talk about how you might approach it rather than listing things that you've already done. Because the thing is, if you're an apprentice and you're 18, you won't have met as many um, different sort of situations as someone who's 30 or even 25. So um, they try to make it easier, whereas at the point when I applied, it was still tell us a situation when you've done this thing, which is quite nerve wracking because you've got to actually think of a situation and not make one up. It's very easy to start making one up and then realise you're talking rubbish. So once I filled in the application form, I sent it off. Uh, the next stage was a telephone interview. This was quite short. I always see these sort of telephone interviews as more of a, are you a real person? Can you speak English? It is true that telephone interviewers can't actually tell that much about your skills and things like that from the telephone interview. But the thing is that it's more there as a baseline just to make sure that you can talk vaguely intelligently, that the things on your CV, that you can talk about those and you haven't made them up. And if they get any sort of vibes off you that it's not quite right. So it's a really easy stage. If you're someone who can just talk, talk, can you talk to your friends on the phone? Actually, nowadays I never talk to anyone on the phone. If you can Skype your friends and you're able to talk normally, that's all you need to be able to do. Um, got through the telephone interview. Then there was the face-to-face -face interview. Now this was a group interview. There were six of us and actually in my interview, there was three people got through onto the apprenticeship in the end. And I was quite pleased because at the end I kind of sat there and went, I think this person and this person will get through. And I was correct. <laughs> now, um, one of the people who got through actually was already an apprentice at BAE on a sort of technical apprenticeship but wanted to move into management. So he was he had to go on to his second apprenticeship. Um, and he got through. Um, and then there was me and then I'm trying to think. There was somebody who was much older who had a boyfriend in Saudi and wanted um, to get a job so that she could move out to Saudi Arabia. Um, there were some interesting characters in there. One thing I will say is make sure to just do the basics right. Arrive on time, wear nice clothes, ideally a suit. If you're a woman you can wear sort of a dress with black tights or nude tights, nice shoes, do your hair nicely, a little bit of makeup and you're banging. Um, the first half, the first part um, was sort of icebreakers basically. I remember talking about um, who who we would invite to a dinner party. I think I chose Jeremy Clarkson. We were all sitting around a table in a meeting room in a hotel, I think it was, and um, there were a pile of interviewers all round the edge of the room. So there was a mix of people who were near the end of their apprenticeship, managers, HR, a few different people. All they like to get a variety of people so that there's different viewpoints. Um, again, this was just really just talk like a normal person. The people who seemed to get through were the people who just acted as if it was a casual conversation, they were having someone, they were polite, they weren't too nervous, they didn't talk too much from nerves. So next we had a group task. Now the group task, uh, I think it was a who done it? It was something like that where we were each given two clues and we had to kind of combine all our clues and work out what was wrong. We actually got it wrong. And bear in mind that they held loads of interviews and 50% of the people in my interview got through and we got 
the task wrong. Um, one thing I did personally do, and I think was a good thing to do, when we were about 30 seconds from the end, um, nobody would make a decision. And this is something I really dislike at work, is when you just need to make a decision. Actually, in some ways, it doesn't matter if you get it right. And um, with about 30 seconds to go, we were given, I don't know, 15 minutes to do the whole task. I said, right, guys, we've just got to make a decision. And uh, we did. And in the end, it was wrong. Um, and what I did is I got everyone to vote for who they thought had done the who done it. And um, we went for it. And I think that was something that counted for me because I was polite about it. I just said, look, guys, we have the choice now. Either we don't make a decision or we let's take a vote now. So keep an eye on the time don't just get lost don't talk too much this is something i'm very good at listen to other people you will be marked on how you listen to other people so if you think about it there's six people in the room try to talk no more than about a sixth of the time um i don't know that's very hard to gauge but actually it um every now and again just check yourself and also if you haven't talked enough but don't just say random stuff just to get your word count up it's really just about staying calm not talking over people making sure you do join in and you say a few things um, you don't have to be the leader you don't have to be the one in charge if someone else is taking charge that's absolutely fine and respect that and just show that you're still taking part but you are respecting that this person has been or has allocated themselves as a leader which is often what happens next was the in-person interview <gasps> this was scary so i uh, had talked to somebody who already worked for BAE um, who was a project controller and we talked in depth about what he did and weirdly I forgot everything in the interview so um, the interview turned to me um, and said so can you describe project management or project controls Was because that was the job I was actually applying for and I said numbery things and he was like can you go further and I was like well, it's numbery things. And I said numbery things more times than really a clever person should say. That was a bit silly. But you just talk about be truthful, be clear, be. Before you go into these sort of interviews, it's really worth understanding what you don't know. Because then you can, especially with an apprenticeship, the whole point of apprenticeship is that you don't know things. If you're going into a full project manager type interview, then it's a bit silly to go in saying, I don't know this. <laughs> you should still be honest about what you don't know, but you're being hired to know these because you know these things. Whereas as an apprentice, you can totally go in and go, I'm a very quick learner, I uh, enjoy numbers, I don't know that much about spreadsheets, but whenever I try I pick it up quite quickly. That is a really good sort of interview attitude. Don't try to big yourself up. Also, try and understand what they want. Again, going back to this person who wanted to move to Saudi. Firstly, apprentices never go to Saudi. Generally, as an apprentice, you don't travel that much because you've got college in wherever it is you're um, working, so you can't travel. Um, two, there are not, not that many people go to Saudi. And three, why are they going to employ someone who, as soon as they're finished, is going to move to Saudi? Um, yes, it may be part of the company, but that's a weird reason to take the role, and it doesn't look like you actually want that role for what it is. With these sort of interviews, it's just about being yourself. It's about answering the questions truthfully. It's about considering them, and it's about understanding yourself is quite an important part. I've, I've interviewed a few sort of interns and things like that and one thing I will say is the people who come across less well are people who really do try to big themselves up, who say they've done these amazing things but can't really say what they learnt from them or if they didn't actually push to do them themselves, maybe it's something that their parents push them to do. It's really useful to come across with a little bit of passion, a little bit of interest in the things you're doing and to just sound like you want the job and that you're not just doing it to sort of tick a box in your life plan that your family have for you. At the end we had another sort of got get together as a group, they talked about the next steps um, and then we went home. So the whole thing I think was half a day or just over half a day and then the interviewers went away in the afternoon and made some decisions and they did a whole week of interviews um, or it may have been two weeks of interviews. Um, I know now they we were the first year of apprentices doing that scheme in Portsmouth so I, there was a lot less candidates than they get now. Apprenticeships are um, 
are quite competitive nowadays. It's really worth going for them, especially if you're not 100% sold on university. Um, personally, I didn't want that debt. And you've got to remember, I was 24 at this point. I had most of a degree and I finished my degree while doing my apprenticeship. Apprenticeships can be open to anyone. Um, there's a real variety of people take them. After the interview, obviously, I was successful. Um, I think I heard something like two weeks later, it was quite soon. If I had just taken A-levels, the way they often do it is similar to universities, they give you a conditional offer, so you need to still achieve your A-levels. But I had an un unconditional offer, so they phoned me up, they said, do you want the job? One thing I will say is you don't have to answer yes straight away. I just said yes straight away. And in hindsight, yes, I was right to say yes, but it is worth thinking about these things. And I have got a stick a few times um, in jobs where I've said, look, I want to think about it. Because remember, just because you've applied for a job, just because you've been to interview does not mean that you have to take the job. If you just sit there and go, well, you know what? In this interview, I realise that it's not for me. Because a good interview, they will talk about the job with you as well. So make sure, oh, that's what I missed out. So they do also... Um, we had a presentation on what the apprenticeship was about, what the format was, how long it was, what sort of degree it was, who the university was, things like that. And that was really worthwhile and it really gave me an understanding of what I was letting myself in for. If they don't do that, beware, because do they actually know what they're trying to get you through? Um, if you're doing an apprenticeship, smaller companies can be amazing, they can give you a really good experience. I know a company down in Vista who they take on one apprentice every year and that apprentice, because it's such a small company, that apprentice gets to try everything because it needs to be a hand-on role and that's an amazing role to have whereas somewhere like BAE you end up doing a very specialised job for quite a long time and then you move on to your next placement but then you've got a wider variety of projects that you could work on so it's having those sort of things in mind and making sure that you're going for the best apprenticeship for you. So I got offered the job once I'd taken that phone call. Um, I just had to wait. The thing about apprenticeships is there's usually quite a long time between applying for them and the actual start date, uh, similar to sort of university applying times. Um, so it's quite a long wait. I think it was about four or five months. Um, and then you're ready to go. And that can be quite... A weird experience knowing you have a job but knowing you don't have a job right now um, but it's worthwhile in the end um, that's the end of my video and um, that's how I got onto the apprenticeship with BAE systems and um, I hope you enjoyed this uh, like and subscribe press the bell or the whatever you want to do are you an apprentice how did you get on your oi oi are you an apprentice? How did you get on your apprenticeship? Let me know, comment below, um, and let's have a little conversation about it. Bye. <sighs> you too. That little section on the end was these guys trying to help me with my recording. Um, thanks for watching and see you next time.